I receive emails and comments on an almost daily basis from people who want to get into shortwave and HF monitoring to receive things like number stations, the amateur bands and broadcast stations. Their main issue is however, they simply don't have enough space to throw a wire up of any decent size, and ask me if I can recommend an alternative. So in this video we'll be looking at a fantastic alternative in the form of this, the TX-HF6 from Moonraker. If you follow this channel, you'll know by now that I love discones, and as discones go, this is pretty extreme. I won't go into the intricacies of the science behind these unusual looking antennas, because I've already done numerous videos on this subject at quite some length, which I'll link in the description below. This is basically a wideband shortened HF dipole, meant for smaller spaces, and it operates over 6 bands. It has received coverage between 3 and 1000 MHz, but you can also transmit on 80 to 6 meters with up to 200 watts of power. It'll effectively cover 3.5, 7, 10, 14, 18, 21, 28 and 50 megs, with a gain of 2.1 dBi over a standard discone. It's 84cm tall, with a diameter of 220cm and a radius of 110cm, so this really is a possible answer for those looking for a wideband HF antenna for smaller spaces or in situations where you can't put a long wire up. As you've probably already noticed, it's good for portable work too, and can be easily mounted on a pole. Setup is really simple, everything comes in this bag along with instructions. The manual provided doesn't tell you in which order the radials have to go in, so you can screenshot this photo, or download it from Moonraker's website, for which a completely non-affiliated link can be found in the description. The antenna radials simply screw into the top of the hub in the order shown, each one is labelled so there's no confusion. The ground planes screw into the bottom of the hub, and there's just three of these. Then your feeder connects to the SO239 connector on the bottom, and it can be attached to the mounting pole which is provided. In the bag are extra sections for the antenna radials which can be moved and swapped to achieve coverage on your desired bands, and there's also mounting brackets. When I set this up outdoors, it was the first time getting it out of the bag, and it took me about 5 minutes, so ideal for portable work or using whilst away from home. So, discones come with a lot of pros and cons, with the majority of cons being purely down to their very nature. They're not usually an effective antenna on a single band, and they're not supposed to be. Many use these types of discones for VHF and UHF scanning, and I call them a jack of all trades, master of none. They'll never measure up to a band specific antenna, so bear that in mind. The manual does indicate that this antenna can be mounted outside, but I wouldn't do so without some proper weatherproofing first around all connections and joints. This is a quite intricate antenna with lots of connecting parts, and water ingress can cause problems. I've mounted mine in the attic, not the most ideal place, but for receiving, which is why I got it in the first place, it does really well. That being said, I achieved really good results using this antenna, and it's a great way of getting on the HF bands without a lot of space. Compared to my wideband long wire I have outside, this receives nearly as well, which is impressive considering it's in the loft. Sierra Papa 9 again. Sierra Papa 9, Papa Fox Dot 5 and 9. Outside I managed to achieve some good SWR results on most bands, and after fine tuning the elements using the grub screws. It took me a while to get this all set up so it was near perfect as possible, but something that must be done to get the best SWR results possible. <laughs> is that you? Hey, are you back from Ireland? Oh. Is that you, uh, 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 Alec? It could be. Charlie, your mic's cutting out. Don't send me down. down. T0RGB, I'm not sure if I got that call right. He was about 595 five to 10 as well. So, all five signals uh, here on uh, 40 meters uh, today, even though it's not supposed to be that good. Anyway, back around to you there, Rob. G2BKZ, uh, Mike Mike Zero, Tango Delta Sierra. Yeah. Okay, fine there, David. That's great. Uh, nice to hear you for the first time. Thank you for that nice report. And uh, I'll put
Of course, in my attic setup, which is quite large, the SWR was slightly higher, purely due to interaction with nearby objects such as roof slates and everything else up there. I got this antenna for monitoring, so it's not much of an issue, but should you wish to transmit on one of these antennas that isn't out in the open, you may benefit from the help of a tuner, just to bring things back in line. Most big rigs will have an auto tuner, but the ICOM 705 doesn't, so I picked up this ATM100M tuner. This is a 1.8 megs to 30 megs tuner that's good for up to 100 watts of output power for SSB and CW, and 50 watts on AM and FM. It can be USB powered and has internal batteries, so it's completely portable. The manual suggests that a full charge takes 4 hours, and standby operation time is 10 to 25 hours. This obviously varies depending on how often you tune up. It supports automatic tuning as well as manual tuning. It also has a high res OLED screen which is bright enough for use outside in the sun. On the front is the power button and tune button, which also functions as the menu and select control. On the back are two SO239 sockets, one that the antenna plugs into, and the other for a patch lead that goes to the radio. On auto tune, the tuner will automatically tune your radio when you first press the PTT on a frequency, and let you know that it's done so. If it can't tune, it'll throw up an error message to let you know. For that initial tune up, it's better to be on low power, not something that's an issue on a QRP rig like the ICOM 705, and in FM mode so there's a constant carrier. Once tuned up you can change to the mode and power you require. This screen shows you the SWR and forward power with meters. You can also see the SWR and forward power as numbers. And there's also SWR and forward power graphs which allow you to monitor readings over time. Holding down the tune button will allow you to access the menu, where you can turn the beep and high SWR alarm on or off, set the tuner to tune automatically when it detects a high SWR, Select the amount of tune memories the device stores, this allows it to remember frequencies it's tuned up before, and access them quickly. You can set the auto tune SWR values depending on what you deem acceptable. You can also calibrate the power and SWR settings, and perform self tests. All of this has been covered extensively in other videos, and is in the instruction manual, so I won't go into loads of details. So there you go. That's one option for an antenna that works, and a tuner if you need some fine tuning, for those who don't have much space. If you want to look at these two items in more detail, then check the description below.